areas of law and even outside of the law. Um, everything from M and A, uh, IP law, litigation, and so on. Anywhere where people need to read long, complicated documents. Uh, but for the purposes of this demo, uh, I'm going to use a litigation-based scenario. So let's take a scenario like this. Let's say you're a litigator and you have a client who had a novel stem cell procedure done to relieve her hip arthritis. Unfortunately, the procedure didn't work and she just ended up getting some inflammation. Again, so you have a client, novel procedure to relieve her hip arthritis, the procedure didn't work, she just ended up with inflammation. So your client blames the surgeon, says he didn't do a very good job. But the surgeon says, no, the fault was actually uh, with the client. She just was not a good candidate for the procedure and he warned her of that. So we're gonna try to figure out what's going on. So this is the liquid text home screen. Here you have, we have each of your projects. We're gonna start by going to the McCaffrey stem cell case project. See, we open that up and here we are. Now, this is the liquid text editor screen. Over on the left, we have our documents list. These are all the documents that we need for this project. You see, in this case, I've already imported all of these documents into the project, but in a real project, I could continue importing these, uh, uh, modifying them, reorganizing them, even replacing them with newer versions as the project went along. Also in this project, it's, you know, it's fake. So we only have like six or eight documents. In a real one, you might have thousands. Over here, we have the reading area where you can have the document or documents that you're reading right now. And finally, over on the right, we have the workspace. This is where you gather information from the different documents, assemble your notes, and sort of start putting together your argument. Okay, so our first question with all this is, was our client actually a good candidate, since that seems to be the sort of first issue? To find out, we'll go and we'll add a little text box here. And we'll say, was she a good candidate for the procedure? And we'll just tag this red and make this a little bigger. Okay. So now to find out whether she was a good candidate, let's go to our documents list here. I'm gonna start by going to the regulatory bodies folder and going to this uh, research report from a medical agency. It talks a little bit about uh, this type of procedure. And over here, I found something that looks like it could be helpful. It says most adults are good candidates for this type of procedure. Well, that looks like it could really help us. I wanna keep track of this. So instead of just highlighting it, I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna drag it off like this, you see, from the document into my workspace and connect it to that little title heading I made before. So now notice what I've done. I've mixed, I've mixed bits of the original text with bits of my own thoughts, in this case, a title heading. Now you'll notice there's a little white arrow here on that excerpt I pulled out. What is that white arrow for? That white arrow is your magic home button. Wherever you are, you can tap that white arrow and get right back to the source of the excerpt that you pulled out. So you are never more than one tap away from context. Okay, great. So now as I keep reading, it says there's a figure a few pages down that sheds a little bit more light on this. So I'd like to compare this text with that figure. But of course, comparing figures and text across pages is actually kind of awkward, but in liquid text, it's not. I can actually just take my fingers and pinch and squeeze the document together like this, you see, and bring the text and that figure side by side, like as though my document was made of rubber. See, this is one of the great things about liquid text. It makes it easy to see the important information together so that you can discover new connections and insights. Okay, so it looks like this diagram will be helpful. I'm just gonna take it, select it here, and pull it out into my workspace like this. Now, something I'll mention, uh, the way I did that pinch gesture a moment ago was on a right, the, the way I brought the, the uh, two different pages of the document together a moment ago was by literally just pinching my fingers against the screen because I happened to be doing this demo on an iPad. But of course, Liquid Text runs on your traditional PCs as well, uh, even your Mac. Uh, in those cases, instead of pinching against the screen, you just uh, use the mouse scroll wheel to accomplish the same thing. So it works great on your desktops as well. Okay, so now here you see I have uh, my, my title heading, I have some text and I have some images that I pulled out from the original document. So you see, I'm starting to build the, the backbone of my argument here in the workspace. Okay, so now the question is, now that we know a little bit more about the algorithms for who's a good candidate, let's find out if our client qualifies. So let's go back to our documents list here. 
Let's go down to patient medical record and we'll open the medical record for our client, Arlene McCaffrey. Now, what do we know about our client? Well, let's first of all, go to inking mode here, okay? What do we know about our client? Well, first of all, we see she has diabetes, we see she has hypertension, and we see she has arthritis. So with that, let's take a look at the algorithm here. Well, is she under 65? Yes. Is she immune compromised? No. Does she have a history of carcinomas? No. But does she have high blood pressure? Yes. So you see our client is squarely in the closely monitor category. So I wanna note that. So I'll just create another little text box here and say she is in closely monitor category. Okay, that's very helpful to know that. But the problem is I need to do more than just note that she's in the closely monitor category. I need to be able to justify it because I know in, uh, in court, I know the opposing counsel is going to argue that she's not in the closely monitored category. The problem is the justification that she's in this category is over here in her medical record. How do I get from my notes over here to the medical record over here? Well, normally this is tricky, but in liquid text, it's actually very easy. Just as Stephen was uh, alluding to earlier, I can just draw a line, a simple line from my document right over here into my notes. And look what liquid text does. It creates a living line, an inkling between my document and my notes. So wherever I am, even for example, uh, if I'm in another document, I can always just tap that link and immediately get back to what's on the other side. What this means is that I'm never more than one tap away, not only from context, but from the justifications and the sources behind my arguments. Okay. So this is great. So now let's say we have a pretty good understanding of what kind of candidate our client was, and she's in the closely monitor category. That's not too bad. So the question is then, why did the procedure fail? Well, maybe the surgeon made a mistake. We should investigate that. To investigate, we'll go over here, create another text box and say, how the surgeon performed the procedure. Okay, and maybe we'll make that a little wider and we'll make that green. So to find out how the surgeon performed the procedure, well, first we'll go back to our documents list here. We'll go first to the surgeon's deposition transcript. You see, here we have it. Now you'll notice to begin with, I've already gone through earlier and highlighted and tagged the key steps that the surgeon uh, performed. So the first thing I wanna do is get an overview of these, see kind of how one step flows into the next. Normally getting an overview is challenging, but with liquid text, I can just tap highlight view and do that same pinch gesture. But now you see what it does. It brings all of the highlighted and tagged text together as I squeeze. If I squeeze apart, I see more context. If I squeeze the document together, I see more of an overview. I wanna learn more about this purple point here. So I just put my fingers around it, squeeze apart to see the context. And no, nope, I don't think it's gonna help me. So I just squeeze back together to get back to the overview. So it's a great way to, again, see the most important information together with however much context you need. And it's a great interaction, but unfortunately in this case, it has not revealed any mistakes the surgeon made. So I wanna dig a little bit more deeply into the way the surgeon performed the procedure. So I wanna pull out the steps the surgeon took. So first we have this step about preparing the stem cell culture. I'll just, since I already highlighted it, I can just double tap it and drag it right out into the workspace like this. Next, the surgeon uh, prepped her for surgery. I'll pull this out as well. They, they ran some blood check, blood tests. Uh, I don't even have to actually drag it out. I can actually just tap auto excerpt and it'll bring it out for me like that. They performed the arthroscopic incision. There we are inserted a dissolving joint spacer. Here we are. And now it mentions the following two steps actually happened before the dissolving joint spacer. So I'll just drag these out as well. Drag the bone fascia and re remove the synovial fluid. And you see, this is one of the great things about liquid text. Because you have this workspace, you're not bound to the order of uh, content in the original documents. You can rearrange and restructure it and reorder it into the form that makes the most sense for your project and for your task, rather than what the author of the documents had in mind. Okay, so next they applied the ICM matrix gel. 
they let the gel set for 15 minutes. That sounds important. I'll just highlight this in yellow. They discovered and shaved off a small bone spur. That's interesting. They applied the stem cell culture. And finally, closed the patient up. Well, on the face of it, I don't see any obvious mistakes in here. But maybe there's something I'm missing. Maybe the surgeon didn't follow the directions correctly. So let's go back to our documents list. Let's go to Galaxidrin product info and go to the Galaxidrin product manual. And let's see what we find. How is the procedure supposed to be performed? Well, let's see. Patient pre-op, prepare the bone fascia, the articular cartilage, prepare the joint, apply the ICM matrix gel, leave it, leave it undisturbed for 15 minutes, uh, remove the excess, apply the stem cell culture, and close the patient up. Well, on the face of it, it looks like the surgeon performed the procedure correctly to the letter. So what could have happened? Well, maybe we're going about this the wrong way, right? Maybe instead of thinking about this in terms of how did the surgeon perform the procedure, maybe we should see, was there anyone in the clinical trials who had a similar failure mode to our client? Maybe that'll shed some light on this. So to find out, let's go back to our documents list here. Let's go to regulatory bodies folder and go to the phase three clinical trials for galaxidrin. And you see, we have a lot of information here. But the only thing I'm concerned about is, did any one of the clinical trials have the same failure mode as our client, namely inflammation? To find out, I want to do a search. Now, of course, I can just click the find button. But in Liquitex, we know that searching is a critical part of your workflow. So we try to make it really fast and easy. I don't even have to click any button. I can just start typing. I-N-F-L-A-M-M-A-T-I-O-N. And there you are. As soon as I start typing, Liquitex brings up a context-sensitive dialog box with different options for what I type. In this case, different searches. So I'll just press return to search the document. And you see it found five results. But unfortunately, these are spread all over the document. You see the little red lines here, here, and here. Those are indicating where the search results are. They're spread all far away. I really want to see them together so I can find which one is most relevant. So again, I take my fingers, I squeeze the document, and you see it brings all the search results together, just like I was able to do with the highlights earlier. If I squeeze apart, I have more context, squeeze together to see everything at once. And again, uh, I happen to be doing this demo on the iPad, so I can just pinch my fingers against the screen. But if you're doing this on your traditional PC or your Mac, you can just do this with the mouse scroll wheel. Now, this point here looks like it might be promising. I'm gonna squeeze apart around this one to see if there's anything useful there. No, that one's not gonna be helpful. What about this one? This one also looks like it might be promising. I'll squeeze my fingers apart around this one. Ah, yes, this one is helpful. Here we actually have something useful for us. It says that there was one patient, one uh, subject in the clinical trials who had inflammation coinciding with a failure of the treatment because the administering surgeon only applied the ICM gel for two minutes instead of the indicated 15. Well, that's huge. Maybe that would shed some light on what happened in our case. So I'm gonna take this point here, drag it out into my workspace, and I'll just highlight it red. And you see the source becomes red as well. And maybe the same thing happened with our client. Maybe the surgeon simply didn't leave the ICM gel on for the indicated 15 minutes. But you know, I see in the notes here, it says the surgeon claims he left it on for 15 minutes. I can even tap the little arrow and see in the deposition transcript where he says he left it on for exactly 15 minutes. So what, ha what could be going on here? Hang on. Excuse me. So perhaps the surgeon simply didn't recall correctly or is even trying to mislead us. To find out, let's go back to our documents list and let's take a look at the lead nurse's deposition transcript. So let's see what she has to say. So as you look through the lead nurse's deposition transcript, well, for better or worse, it turns out she agrees. She concurs that exactly at the 15 minute mark, they removed the ICM gel. So that, that seems to suggest the surgeon, uh, the surgeon was right, but maybe there's something else we're missing. Why don't we compare what the lead nurse and the surgeon say about this, uh, about the procedure to see if there are any discrepancies that might shed light on what really happened there. So I'm gonna take the surgeon's deposition transcript here and I'm gonna drag it out and bring it up like this, side by side with the nurses. So you see now 
we can see the nurse's deposition transcript and the surgeon's together. So let's see, is there anything useful, anything that would help us in here? And at first I don't see anything, but then I do see something interesting. I note that uh, after 10 minutes, the nurse mentions that uh, a small bone spur was shaved off uh, of our client. And uh, critically, the surgeon agrees that this happened after 10 minutes. But the nurse mentions something the surgeon neglects to mention, that after shaving off this bone spur, the surgeon flushed the debris out of the joint using saline. Well, that's very significant. Maybe spraying the saline after only 10 minutes in some way interfered, disrupted the proper setting of the ICM gel. Well, I don't know. This, this is maybe getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, but it's definitely worth, keep, worth keeping track of this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this point and drag it out into my workspace, of course. The second thing I want to do is connect the nurse's and the surgeon's deposition transcript around this point about the 10 minutes. So let me show you what I mean by that. You saw earlier how I can draw a line to connect my documents and my notes. Well, I can also draw a line to connect two different documents. So I'm gonna draw a line from the nurse's point about this procedure being 10 minutes to the surgeon's, just like this. And you see now Liquitext has created an ink link between my documents. So what this means is, let's say I'm in trial and uh, I note that uh, the, this uh, bone spur was shaved off after 10 minutes and opposing counsel says, no, the, we, we have evidence that it was after 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, I don't have to fumble through my notes. I don't have to search through my documents. I simply click the link and instantly get back to the point in the surgeon's deposition transcript that corroborates what the nurse said. What this means is, again, to that point of a second brain, the network of connections and associations that you build in your head, that's how you kind of construct your arguments, how you justify and support your points. You can now capture this in the documents themselves right on your computer in front of you. So it makes it incredibly easy to provide the reasoning and the justification behind your arguments. Okay, this is great. So uh, this is a good working theory, but we need a little bit more evidence that, uh, that uh, spraying the saline disrupted the procedure. So first, let's go back to uh, the Galaxidrin product manual, see what we can find there that might help us. Well, we see that it does say you need to leave the ICM gel undisturbed for 15 minutes. So I'm going to select that, pull that out into the workspace as well. And we'll also highlight that red since it's pretty critical. But this still does leave us with one big question. Saline is very mild stuff. Could spraying saline actually disrupt the ICM gel? Well, I'm not sure offhand, but I do notice we have a material safety data sheet for Galaxidrin. Let's see what it says. So as we go through it, at first, I don't see anything particularly useful, but then I do come across a point that I think will help us. Solubility in water, very high. Look at that. If the solubility is very high, then that means that spraying saline probably could wash it away. So this is probably what happened. I think we have a pretty good theory I think we have a pretty good theory for this case. So I'm just gonna create a text box here. Uh, and we'll say, let's raise the font size a little bit. And we'll say, conclusion. The surgeon accidentally washed away the ICM gel after only 10 minutes when he sprayed saline to remove bone fragments. Okay, I think that makes a lot of sense. So since this point, since our conclusion point is related to this excerpt and this excerpt, I'd like to be able to show that. I'd like to be able to visualize that connection. Now, you remember how I was able to connect uh, documents and notes by drawing lines and documents and documents by drawing lines, but I can also do this with notes and notes. So I'll just draw a line connecting these two excerpts to this conclusion point. And you see it creates, again, living lines connecting them. Now, this is a very small project, but in a real one, these could be separated by quite some distance. And you can simply tap one end of the line to get to whatever is on the other end of the line. Effectively, you can start to shape your workspace into a mind map. Well, that's terrific, but the court does not want to see my mind map. The court wants to see a nice finished linear document. 
So how can I get from all these great notes and ideas to a nice linear finished document? Well, in Liquid Text, we give you a few tools for doing that. I can just go tap the send button. And in this case, we can select notes outline. And you see what the app does. It takes all of my notes, all of my highlights, and shapes them, forms them into a nice linear document that I can send to Microsoft Word with one click. Now, let's say this point about uh, removing the debris with saline is a really critical point, as it is. So even in the document that I export to Word, I want to be able to get back to the original source for this. How can I do that? Well, let me show you. I'm just going to go back, select this point again, and now I'm going to select Copy Link. Now it copies a link to the clipboard. And I'll just paste that link right into my conclusion note over there. And of course, as you would expect, if I click on that, it takes me back to uh, what this link refers to. Now you say, well, why do we need text-based links? We have these wonderful visual ink links. That's true. But text-based text -based links have one magic power that ink links do not. That is, they work across applications. So let me show you what I mean. So to make this a bit more dramatic, let's go to, uh, say, a different document here. And now let's go back to send notes outline. And we'll export this right over to Microsoft Word. There we are. And so now you see we have in Microsoft Word uh, all of our notes and everything from our workspace. And over here, we have this point on the bottom, that, uh, that link that we created a moment ago. If I click this link, it takes me back to Liquid Text, right to the same project, to the same document, and even the same point in the document and highlights what that link refers to. This means you can have great cross product, cross application workflows using Liquid Text. Okay, that's terrific. Now you noticed, uh, or you'll note that I mentioned uh, at a few points that I happen to be doing the demo on my iPad, but if I was doing this demo on uh, my PC, it would work pretty much the same. There would just be, I'd use the scroll wheel and the mouse instead of doing pinch gestures on the screen. Well, uh, since Liquid Text works in multiple devices, you might ask, how do they work together? Well, for that, let me, let me show you. Now this, unfortunately, I can't do a live demo. I have to uh, show a little video, but, uh, but it works pretty well also. So here's a user using Liquid Text on their PC and her iPad at the same time. Liquid Text has real-time synchronization. So you notice the actions that she takes on her iPad are reflected on Liquid Text on her PC virtually instantly, just like that. What this means is you can use each device for whatever it's best for, and you can, you can actually use them together. So for example, organizing large amounts of content. You see, that tends to be a lot easier to do on a big screen rather than a small screen. And you see, as our user does it, it's reflected on the iPad. Likewise, doing freehand inking is a lot easier to do on a tablet than on a big screen. And you see, as our user does freehand inking on her iPad, it appears almost instantly on her Windows desktop as well. So for example, let's say she does something that's really convenient to do on the desktop. In this case, document comparison with the big screen. Uh, she sees two documents related, and then she creates an ink link from a document into her notes, just like we did earlier. And then now you see that ink link appears on her iPad, and she can tap it to follow it even on the other device. What this means is you can use your devices together and just pick whichever one makes the most sense for each step in your workflow. Okay, actually, we'll just go back here. And uh, with that, let me uh, pause here and uh, take any questions. So we are now open for Q&A. If anyone has any questions, please uh, submit them and uh, we'll be happy to answer. Well, this is a quiet and well-behaved crew. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I've been answering a few as they've come up, but uh, once again, uh, uh, Betsy Zhang has a question. If you would go into the Q&A and type it in, I will be happy to read and answer it for you.
Well, Richard would like to uh, know more about the AI features. Uh, <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, let's, uh, let's do a quick demo of that here. Okay, so beautiful. So actually, maybe uh, maybe we'll just hop in there and just redo that, begin that from scratch again. So uh, in, in the demo earlier, in order to find out who was a good candidate for this procedure, uh, I actually had to you know spend a lot of time reading this document and searching for who uh, who was a good candidate or not or not. But let's say you, that's only a, a small side task of the larger project that you're working on. Uh, it might be nice to use the AI to try to find that answer for you. And so the way the AI works in liquid text is you type in any text box, you simply type slash. And as soon as you type slash, it brings up the different uh, options related to AI uh, and document analysis generally. So we have two options. First, slash AI to ask a question about, question about your documents or slash slash to automatically link. In this case, we're concerned about the first one, asking a question about your documents. So I'll type slash AI and then write, who is a good candidate for the stem cell regeneration procedure? Now you'll notice in the little pop-up, uh, it, it lets me select which documents it's going to search uh, when it answers this question. So if I want, I can actually select all and it'll search through all of my documents looking for information to answer the question. But in this case, we're just gonna go select visible. Uh, it'll be a little bit faster and we'll just search uh, this document for the answer. So as soon as I press return, it analyzes my document, connects to chat GPT, finds the parts of the document that are most relevant, sends them off. And uh, within a few seconds, as you see, derives an answer. Now, the beautiful thing about uh, the way we do this is we don't we work with ChatGPT, so it doesn't just derive an answer from random stuff that's found on the web. It specifically derives an answer from your document or documents. And as a result, after each statement it makes, it includes a link to that exact point in your documents that it's using to derive its answer. So you see, I can literally click right here and get to the exact points that ChatGPT used to build its answer. Uh, so this is the first point uh, with our AI. The second point is simply automatic uh, linking or automatic citations and linking. So let me just, I'll just make that a new box here. Um, let's say, uh, let's say I'm taking notes on the document that I'm reading. Uh, this one's a little bit long. Let's find something that's gonna be a little bit, well, actually no, that's a good box document. Let's find a, uh, an interesting point. Okay. Uh, let's say I'm taking notes on this paragraph of my document here. Uh, and I write, let's say, human stem cells uh, can be used to gain access to various adult cell types. Now, this since I'm taking notes on my document, I'm reading one of these paragraphs right here as I write this. Uh, normally, if I wanna show that this note pertains to one of these paragraphs, I would have to draw an ink link or make one of those text-based links, but we figure maybe we can help you with this a little bit. So I can just type slash slash and liquid text finds the paragraph on the screen that I was probably taking my notes on. And if I agree that it's correct, I can just press return and the AI automatically inserts a link right there, see, to that paragraph. This makes it a lot faster and easier to take notes and to write my thoughts about the things I'm reading without having to manually go through the process of creating these citations and links uh, over and over again. So that's, uh, that's our AI in a nutshell. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about it. We have a question. Uh about collaboration. Excellent. Uh, so today, the way you do collaboration with Liquid Text is you simply click on send and you send the entire Liquid Text project file 
uh, to your collaborators who can continue working on it and send it back to you. But we know that's a little bit awkward. So uh, we're actually working on uh, a real-time invite-based collaboration system. So you can simply invite your colleagues into the same Liquitex project and you don't have to send any files by email or anything like that. You simply invite them and they begin working on the same project with you in real time. Uh, this should be out uh, before the end of the year. Okay, we have a question, excuse me, uh, asking, <laughs> asking if Highlight View can filter different colors. Oh, that's a good question. Highlight View per se does not have that, um, but we have, what we do have is uh, for things that are based on a tag rather than a color, you can select which tags you want to view. So for example, uh, in this document, we, uh, let me actually just show a little bit about how tagging works uh, to make that a little bit clearer. So let's say I select some text here and uh, I wanna indicate that this text is one of the procedural steps that the surgeon took. Uh, Liquid Text has a tag editor where I can create all different kinds of tags. So let's say uh, we have different types of tags about the procedure the surgeon uh, performed. So let's say we have procedure and let's say we make a tag for what we believe are mistakes the surgeon made. We'll make this bright red and we'll add this. And you see now it's tagged this piece of text with procedure mistake. And let's say we think there are a couple of other mistakes and we'll go through and just tag these as well. And you see all these points that I tagged in green earlier, these are all procedure steps. So this is just a step that's, that the surgeon performed. Uh, so if, let's suppose I'd like to see all the procedure mistakes together. I can just go to uh, search here, do a tag search and select procedure mistake, search for tags. And you see now when I pinch, it brings together all of the places that I tagged with procedure mistake. On the other hand, let's say I wanna see all the procedure steps that the surgeon performed. Again, go to tag search, select procedure step, search for tags, and same thing. When I squeeze, it brings together all of the things that I tagged with procedure step and how the surgeon performed the procedure. So again, although we don't have a uh, selection for the color for highlight view that you wanna see, as long as you just use tags instead of straight highlights, uh, you, can, uh, you can do effectively the same thing, just use 